in the covenant you establish for reconciling the human race. So dispose our minds, we pray, that what we celebrate by professing the faith, we may express in deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We can be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak. Truly I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, and how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just after daybreak, 
Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there, was, there, was, there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about ninety meters off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. We can be seated, please. Again, I just uh, forgot to mention before Mass started that we're obviously we'll leave our masks on during the Mass and also for communion. For those who wish to receive communion, I will be on either side of the casket. For I'll start on that side and I'll make my way to this side. And those who wish to come up, just come up and uh, you can receive. The best way to receive is just to take the host in your hand with your mask on and then you can walk over here and just to remove your mask and to take the host. Again, just to be careful if we're receiving that, that whole process. We can sometimes uh, drop the host. We don't want that to happen, but let's, so just to be aware of that. Thank you, Paula, and uh, for uh, taking my phone call yesterday and for chatting with me. It was nice to again to spend a little bit about your mom. You were able to send. I don't know how they say mom in Polish. Maybe just say mom. A woman obviously who loved the outdoors and I'm good dance. That's on the coast, is it not? Yes, up on the coast. So to I'm sure the coastline of Gdansk is much different than the coastline of Lake Erie. However, water is water, uh, salt water up there, I'm sure, fresh water down here. But still, I have a funny feeling too that maybe fish might be a steeple in Gdansk given its proximity to the water. And so our Lord loved fish. So maybe in a particular way why Poland loves our Lord is that our Lord loved fish. I'm just not sure what that is, but I'll share that thought. But still, a homeland that uh, people having this particular area too, how I grew up not far from here, in a little place called Park Hill, not far from Grand Bend. And so this is my homeland. I've never really ventured too far. I've traveled to different places of the world, but I've always returned here and have made my home where I have, of course, spent most of my life. I don't know what it's like to leave a homeland and to come and make a new home. In a different country. I have met many who have for various reasons, and for many, the, the biggest reason was the issue of the war, the fallout of the politics after the war, communism and such. Many people came over from Holland and Belgium, many people from Italy and places like that. And you know, a lot of Polish people made their way over to Canada, and I've had an opportunity in Windsor to meet many Polish people, uh, and in London, in Czechoslovakia, and places such as this, and to share much with them, especially wonderful food, which I know the Polish people uh, prepare in abundance. But that gift of our homeland, 
We can travel all we want. We can travel hither and thither. We can travel from Poland. We can travel from anywhere in the world. But our journey is not over until we pass through that veil of death. That veil of death, that walking into the unknown that all of us will one day have to walk. We'll all have to pass through that veil. Not one of us, as they say, will get out of this one alive. We will all perish in that sense. And that sense is not to leave with that sense of doom and gloom, as we're reminded in the readings today, that our Lord died for us first. And three days later, he conquered death and rose from the dead. That all who follow him may live in heaven for eternity. And so, when we think of our homeland, we ponder the gift of heaven. And the only way to get to heaven is with or in Jesus Christ. There is no other way to get to heaven. Jesus Christ is the way. He's also the door. And so the only way that we'll ever find our way to that beautiful homeland in heaven is through Jesus Christ. And so, of course, then, we understand the need during our life on earth to be close to Jesus Christ, to be very close to Him. I don't know the full story of how uh, our Lord and then Christianity made its way to Poland, but I do know that, of course, Poland embraced the gift of the Catholic Church and is celebrated there with great fervor. And the beautiful gift that the Polish people bring with their expression of their faith and so for us today to ask ourselves, am I a follower of Jesus Christ? Do I make time for him? Do I ponder the reality of my own mortality? Do I ponder that? Do I think about it? It maybe scares us a bit. One dear saint says, until we've accepted death, we will never begin to live. With that acceptance, through Jesus Christ, we find not a sense of gloom, but a real sense of hope. Because the proximity to Jesus Christ here, he fills us with that grace of hope. The reality that I know I'm going to pass through the darkness of death, but the light of heaven is on the other side. And that's not a pipe dream, it's an actual promise. This week, the Gospels are actual historical moments when people encountered Jesus Christ after he rose from the dead. And one reason why there's descriptions such as eating fish is that it showed that our Lord was physically present, not just a spirit, a ghost, so to speak. He actually was with them. He touched them. They touched him. He ate in their presence and these kind of things. So he was actually there, and they saw him. As St. Peter reminds us in the Acts of the Apostles, he didn't appear to everybody, but only to those who would then become witnesses and to share their actual meetings with the risen Lord. And so, Lord, we pray that as we continue our journey in this world towards our homeland in heaven, that one day we will see you physically in your glorified form in heaven and to be with all of our family together forever. I'll end with a quote from a fourth century bishop from Northern Africa that I've often used at funerals. He reminds us, we are never to forget, beloved, that we have renounced the world we are living here now as aliens, and only for a time. When the day of our homecoming puts an end to our exile, frees us from the bonds of the world, and restores us to paradise and to a kingdom, we should welcome it. What person stationed in a foreign land would not want to return to his or her own country as soon as possible? Well, we look upon paradise as our country, and the great crowd of our loved ones awaits us there, a countless throng of parents, brothers, and children, sisters, long for us to join them. 
Assured though they are of their own salvation, they are still concerned about ours. What joy both for them and for us to see one another and grace. Oh, the delight of that heavenly kingdom where there is no fear of death. Oh, the supreme and endless bliss of everlasting life. We can stand here, please. Lord, we now place before you our prayers. In baptism, Maria should receive the light of Christ, scatter the darkness now, and lead her over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us in the way of the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting hope with your Son. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Maria seek comfort and consolation, heal their pain, and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We can be seated. Thank you. and even the heavenly powers, 
with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they attain. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We'll be with you. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the new fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and ministry to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Ronald Peter our Bishop, Joseph his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Maria, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We can stand. At the Savior's command, I am formed out of my teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the Lord, kingdom of the Father and the glory of your Lord, Lord, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. We can be like this.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now praying that you should enter under my roof, but, but only see the earth of my soul shall be healed. Jesus said to his disciples, Come and eat. And he took bread and gave it to them. Hallelujah. Again, as I mentioned at this time of communion, you're welcome to come. If by chance you're not of the Catholic faith or not practicing your faith, you're still welcome to come for a blessing. I just cross your arms and I can give you a blessing.
the kids can. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again, when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. In baptism, Maria shared in the death and resurrection of Christ. May she be welcomed with the glory of eternal life. this incense rise to God, who has called her to share in his glory.